Well, hello, good people. Today we're going to take a closer look at image prompting in focus and different ways where we can utilize this to our advantage. To access image prompting, you have to toggle on input image. And the first way I want to show you how to use this is by dragging a already generated image in the image prompt area here. Now, by the way, the dragging of the image works on Google Chrome. I believe it doesn't work on Firefox, so it depends on your browser. We're going to leave stop at and wait for now. I'm going to explain it in the next section. But basically, image prompt is like a style influencer, OK? And for this example, you see that I have no prompts in there. If you want to know my settings, I'm just using the speed option at 1024 by 1024. For styles, I have Focus V2 on, Enhance, Sharp, Digital Art, and Fantasy Art. And the model I'm using is Real Cartoon XL. And in the Advanced tab, I have a Guidance Scale of 4, Image Sharpness at 2. Now I'm going to close the advanced section so that we can have a bigger workspace here. So if we take a look at the generated images, you see that this is sort of a way to do image to image. You can create variations based on your source image, similar in style and context. But this is a very common way to use image prompting. Now the great thing about this is I can further influence this with other images, right? Without a prompt. But this time I'm going to use this image. Stop at at 0.6, wait at 0.7. We'll go ahead and generate those images. So now you see the second image is influencing the first image, and we see a blending of styles between the two images. Now, in this one, there's no wolf whatsoever. Remember, we don't have a prompt, it's interpreting it in a very free way. And then the next two images, again, there's no wolf, there's actually a woman character. But that has a lot to do with the settings that we have set here. And I promise we're going to get there in a moment. Next, I'm going to remove this image. And now we're going to actually use this as a prompt, OK? In the prompt area, I'm just going to put tiger. And then we're going to leave everything else. As a result, the generated image with the tiger is heavily influenced by the style of our reference image. If we were to put them side by side, you will see in terms of color, very similar composition and layout. They look very similar, except that the subject is a tiger and the other one's a wolf. So I'm going to use this as the reference image. And now we're going to change the prompt to a dragon. And for stop at, we're going to put it all the way up to 1. And we're going to weight it at 1, 2 and generate a couple images here. As a result, we have these two images with a dragon tiger hybrid image. And that's because our weights are both at one and one. And I wanted to reverse engineer to explain this to you. So remember what I said earlier. Think of this as like a style transfer or a way to blend images. And there's two layers that works with this. One image is the dragon. So think of that as one image. And then we have this tiger image that is influencing our results. Let's first talk about weight. The way I think about weight is how much influence does this reference image have on the generated image, the new one that's about to be generated. OK, as we saw in these examples, the influence of this reference image, it being a tiger and even down to the colors in the composition are very similar to the reference image because we have a weight of one. If I decrease the weight to, let's say, 0.5, so halfway or 50 percent, let's generate a couple more images here with a weight of 0.5. You see here from these images, it looks more like a dragon, but has some influence from the reference image, like these pinkish purple flowers. From the original image, you see we have colorful skies, some snowtop mountains, and some nature. Also see those things, but the composition isn't the same. Even the position of the dragon is different from the tiger. So having the weight at 0.5 or 50%, a little bit of influence on the output compared to a weight of 1, where that influence was very strong. Next, let's take a look at stop at. I'm going to bring the weight up to one because I want the style to be very evident. Now, if we put stop at 0.5, let's generate those images. 
So think of it as blending half the dragon image and half the tiger image. If we think of stop at as a percentage, we're telling focus generate 50% of the image to look like this and 50% of the image to generate a dragon. So you're getting a hybrid blending of those two images. With that being said, these two work together. So you have to find a balance based on what it is you want. Now the other cool thing is you can take two images like this one. We saw this one previously. We're going to use this as a background and I have this character here that I rendered earlier. And both of them, we have weights of one across the board. As a result, we get the character with a very similar background from the reference image. Now it does look like a girl because it's just an image prompt, but I can add some text prompts to keep it looking like a boy, obviously. But that's another cool way to utilize image prompting. There's so many different ways where you can utilize this, but it's a great way to be creative with various images. But more importantly, we can use this feature in Focus to get somewhat of consistent characters. It's not gonna be 100% exact, but this is the close that I've gotten to be able to generate fairly consistent characters. And it's actually a pretty simple process. Now, if you want to see that video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Let me know in the comments and I'll try to get that video to you as soon as possible. Now, if this is your first time on my channel and you want to learn more about Focus and how to install it, make sure to check out this video here. I've got a beginner video coming out for Focus very, very soon as well. Until the next one, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.